This is Money Talk Radio, and I'm Ellis Martin. Today, Uva Ahrens joins me. Mr. Ahrens is Managing Director at Altec Advanced Materials AG and is Executive Director of Meloir Industrial Group, Berhad. Mr. Ahrens holds Masters in both Mechanical Engineering and Business Administration from the Technical University, Darmstadt, Germany. Altec Batteries trades on the Australian ASX as ATC and in the U.S. on the OTC as ALTHF. Altec Batteries is commercializing a 100 megawatt hour solid state sodium chloride battery production facility in Germany and is also at the cutting edge of developing battery materials for a lithium ion battery future by successfully incorporating silicon and graphite anodes to produce higher energy density batteries. We will be discussing both of these technologies today. Uva, welcome to the program. It's great to visit with you today. Thank you for having me. You're developing a salumina anode, which is really important for EVs. And on the other hand, you are also developing a sodium chloride battery, which is great for energy storage and has nothing to do with EVs. Let's start with a salumina anode first and tell us why that's so important for electric vehicles. Yeah, Altec has two big legs to stand on, which are in different market fields. And the first one is Sylvina anode, which is high-performance anode material for the lithium-ion battery. What do both projects have in common? Altec is a ceramic specialist, and the ceramic is the key to both technologies. For getting the high density and performance of lithium-ion batteries, there was a lot of scientific use in the cathode, but now the focus is on the anode, and there the key material is silicon, metallized silicon. And the use of silicon has a big challenge. One is it has a huge first charge loss, which is maybe 40 to 50 percent of the capacity. And then it degrades very quickly because silicon swells up to three times when it is charged with lithium ions. And what Altec does is that we put a very thin nano layer of ceramic coat and keep that silicon in check. And that it's a key technology to be able to use silicon, which has 10 times the capacity of graphite in. How long will it take for this technology to be deployed in electric vehicles? I am very familiar with first cycle loss. I have a Tesla, and after the first few charges, the range capacity greatly diminished, and there's really nothing I can do about it, and you can't retrofit these cars. So I imagine within five years or so, technology such as yours would be potentially instituted in new EVs, correct? That is correct. Essentially, the technology itself is known. A lot of scientific institutes have tested this alumina coating, ceramic coating of unknown materials, but they only done it in the lab. And what Altec does, that we have a simplified wet process, which can be industrialized. And we are in the moment, in the process of commissioning a pilot plant in Saxony, Germany. And once this is running, our materials will go out for qualification processes to various automotive OEM and battery makers, and then the process will start. So the first material could be in the market within two years' time. Tell us why you're doing business in Germany right now. Is it about the technology? Is it about the EV market in Europe and the U.S.? What's the plan with Altec? That's a good question. There's three answers to it. Firstly is we need the technology, the process equipment, and to work closely. So what is Germany known for? In engineering process, developing building plants. That's one. Is that the main reason? No. The main reason is that we are having a new technology. That new technology is needed in order to have a counterpart to Chinese and Korean battery technology so as to make Europe and the US independent of these supply chains, which can work and sometimes don't work. So the reason we are in Europe is because we are wanted there. We are wanted there and we are needed. So for market entry of a product like ours, it's either EU or the US. And for now, we decided to have the first unit in the EU and we get great support here. We're not very far away from, we're about 30 minutes drive from the Tesla factory in Brandenburg. We're just on the other state line. Brandenburg is the neighboring state. I was going to ask you what your relationships are like at this point with end users. And I imagine you cannot be too specific given NDA agreements you've probably signed, but are they ongoing? Certainly they're ongoing. We're producing a product which is highly sought after and we're talking to many. And the asset test is once they get the material into their own factory, that this material works. We have proven in our labs, but it's a very different 
different thing if material goes into the industrial process of various battery makers or battery users or OEMs because every battery has a very specific combination of electrolyte and other materials. Our product is a drop-in product, so people don't have to change the production process. They just add 10% instead of graphite, they add 10% of our product and have a much higher capacity and density with small adaptations on the cathode, but that doesn't require a new process. So yes, we are talking to many and I can't disclose any further until these tests are done. In addition to mitigating first cycle loss, you're also able to extend the range of the battery itself by 30%, is that right? Yeah, 30% are the first tests. A normal lithium-ion battery has a capacity of maybe 350, 320, 370. So all batteries are way above 400 milliamperes per gram. And that means that with the same battery, you have 30% more capacity with the anode material. Reason being that silicon has 10 times the capacity to store lithium ion. And with that, you have a great increase in performance, in capacity, and of course, then with less density, you can have a higher range of the battery within the EV. Can we see possibly in the coming years a 600 to 700 mile range battery in a car? Uh, that's for sure. Those batteries are being built now. They are all prototypes, so they are too expensive for you and me, but batteries will for sure be available in three years' time, five years' time that easily have 700, 800 kilometers without costing a fortune. I assure you of that. Let's shift over to energy storage for communities, for industrial parks, for housing developments, for cities, various municipalities. Your sodium chloride battery is an answer in that regard. Yeah, for sure. Firstly, we have to look at market capacity and size of stationary batteries. Ten years back, stationary batteries were a niche product whereby now energy transition of going into renewable energies require massive amounts of stationary batteries. Because renewable energy, wind blows when it blows, the sun shines when it shines. But power is required 24-7. So that gap of power being produced and power being used, the only solution is battery storage. And if you look at the Tesla factories, how many battery packs they are producing and they're going into this market, it's a huge market. People like McKinsey or Bloomberg, if you look at those studies, there's estimating that the stationary battery market is bigger than the EV battery market in totality. So that is huge. And for this market, there are many challenges to solve. If I may uh, say so, stationary batteries, the most important part is safety. Now, lithium-ion batteries, we all know there is no 100% safe. They're getting better, but every now and then they burn down. So if you have in your basement in a shopping mall or something, a battery that can catch fire, that's pretty uncomfortable. And it's dangerous. And it costs money to monitor. It costs money to see. So our battery is a sodium chloride solid-state battery. There's two things. One, it's a solid-state battery. It means it has no electrolyte. It has a solid state ceramic electrolyte, which means there is nothing inside that can burn. You can throw this battery into the fire, it will not burn. So it is 100% safe. There's nothing. The other advantage by having this sodium chloride battery, sodium chloride is table salt. It's the what you put on your egg in the morning. So it's a very simple product. Here a lot about sodium ion batteries, which are now developed in China. is something totally different because these are room temperature separated sodium ions. Ours is really table salt. And this battery is a perfect solution. Why? It is safe. Second, it does not depend on critical materials. The battery does not have lithium. It doesn't have cobalt. It doesn't have any other additives. It doesn't have copper and it doesn't have graphite. So if you look at the supply chain, 90% of all graphite used in batteries in the world today comes from China. So do you think China wants you and me to be successful? No. So we need to cut this dependence, right? And the dependence is very easy. I just use something else. And in America, in Germany, salt is available anywhere. And on top of it, ceramics are made of silica sand, quartz sand. Sand is also the second most common product in the earth crust. It's available everywhere. So it doesn't matter where we build this battery, you can use local supply chains and you are independent. So we are practically our opinion have the perfect solution for a stationary battery. And it's equal in quality as or in density as a lithium-ion phosphate battery and all others. Tell me some of the other advantages and also while you answer this, why has it taken so long for something as simple as table salt to be deployed? 
deployed in the energy storage arena. Sodium chloride, high temperature batteries are known since the 80s. Mercedes-Benz first tested this battery for the Mercedes A-Class when California changed the regulation. And then once they were open, they dropped it. So this battery is heavy and large, which makes it not suitable for EVs. And in the 80s and 90s, there was no stationary battery market. It's only now become apparent. And that's why this technology is moving forward. And there are some batteries that are producing, like the Japanese, they make a sodium sulfur battery, which is similar, but not the same. And there are others. So the big difference is that we're making a competitive, large-scale, high-density battery. And when we come to the advantages, now, if you are a battery park operator, you make money with the power you save and you discharge. And for that, you can use it 10 years, 7 years, mostly lithium-ion batteries have to be changed. Why? Because they only have 70% of the capacity and then the older they get, the more dangerous they become. Yeah? They degrade. Our battery has no anode. The anode is formed each time and that is the reason this battery has the same capacity after 10 years, after 15 years. It does not age. It does not degrade. It is technically physical, not possible. That means you, when you operate battery park in California, you will make the same money in 10 years as today. And that is a big difference. We all know from our handphones how lithium-ion batteries degrade. We know it from the early cars. So lithium-ion batteries degrade. And that is a huge advantage. And since we're talking about California, I'd like to speak about another advantage. Lithium-ion batteries are sensitive things. They work well between yeah, 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Almost like a baby. You have to nurse them. If it's too cold, you have to heat. If it's too hot, you have to cool. Otherwise, the battery collapse, catch fire. Our battery, there's nothing. You don't need to cool. You don't need to heat. You can put it in a Californian desert, 70 degrees surface temperature. There's nothing you need to do. The battery operates isolated without having a fan, without having an aircon, without having a heater or anything. So all these things add up to the operating cost. And for you, let's say you are my client, you want to have the lowest total life cost, which are called levelized cost of storage. We are quite convinced that the battery that we are coming into the market will have half of any levelized cost storage known today because we don't have all these operating costs. You don't need maintenance. You don't need all these safety features of catching fire because the battery doesn't get you just plug it in take it and also when you install the battery our battery can be delivered fully charged fully assembled it's not a dangerous good so you can drive it on the road fully installed you don't need to assemble you don't need any safety so there is a lot of advantage arguably this is the best battery for stationary storage many people ask are there other batteries yes there are other batteries and they all have a marketplace the market is huge and each battery has a special purpose, but for this, surely our sodium chloride solid state battery, which we call Serenity, which is ceramic energy, is, in our opinion, the leader in this marketplace to be. Uwe, you mentioned California, the seventh biggest economy in the world. What are your plans for this state? We have big plans for the United States. The United States is a great place to go large scale. And for that, we are building the first line in Germany and a smaller plant. And then we wish to go to the United States with certain gigafactories. The market is, is great. The support is great. Inflation Reduction Act provides many opportunities. And we are monitoring the U.S. market very well. But we want to build the first line in Germany because we want to go into the market with product made in Germany where people actually believe what we're saying. We have a safe product, long product, and then we are ready to go into the United States. I imagine your system is proprietary. Are you going to be the main, the only game in town and maybe some sort of platform technology for other people to license? It's a relatively simple answer. The technology or chemistry of such a battery can download from the internet. So where's the secret? The secret is really in the large-scale production and a few special tricks in making the solid electrolyte. You can imagine ceramics are isolators. So the ceramic cylinder, which is the solid electrolyte, have special features a morphology, it has to be conductive, it has to be this. So there is a gazillion special things that have been developed over the last eight years and it's not easy to repeat. So we believe to be market leader and of course we have various patterns in terms of the production, in terms of the technology of certain parts within the battery. There are other sodium-based batteries in the market but not like ours, not at this size and not this large-scale production which of course is competitive. Uwe, I come from a family of engineers and technicians and 
inventors, and I was playing with energy generation back in the mid-60s. It's a real treat to be able to chat with you today and learn of this technology and share it with our audience. I look forward to future discussions. Thank you so much for joining me today on the program. Thank you, Alice. It was my pleasure, and I'd like to invite you to come and visit us and look at the battery. It's here, and it's operating, so let's see where we go. I will do that, sir. Thank you again. I've been chatting with Uwe Ahrens, Managing Director at Altec Advanced Materials AG. Altec Batteries trades on the ASX as ATC and in the U.S. on the OTC as ALTHF. For more information on the company, go to altecgroup.com. For Money Talk Radio, I'm Ellis Martin. Find us at ellismartin.com.